In our search for exoplanets, which is now rising through 5,000. By the way, anyone in the audience born since 1995? Just quickly raise your hand. We humans live in a vast universe, more expansive than anything you can ever imagine, flung trillions of miles in every direction, and without any definite ending is the extent of what we know as the universe, as much as curiosity runs in our veins. We have only been able to crack a minute portion of what we can, which is also a minute portion of what we know exists, and probably the minutest portion of what really exists. Now. Whatever we know about our universe is nearly non-existent within this intricate tapestry of the universe. Our solar system is an arrangement in order where certain planetary and celestial bodies move and coordinate their activities relative to a single star called the Sun. Our solar system is an amazing collection of the Sun, planets, moons, comets, asteroids, and other celestial bodies that are interconnected in a weird gravitational dance routine. Central to our solar system is that ball of fire that you wake up to every morning, unless it's winter where you are, or you wake earlier than the sun rises. The sun is a gigantic seething ball of hot gas that illuminates our world and supplies heat and warmth to our other sister planets that orbit around it. The sun's gravitational force and pull are what keep everything within the solar system in perfect harmony and coordination. Next, in order within this solar system, are massive bodies called planets. One of these is our home, Earth. Other planets include Mercury, a planet that is so heated, nothing can survive there, Venus with its thick and choking atmosphere, and Mars, where Elon Musk is gearing up to relocate humans. Each planet has its own uniqueness, and one of the most exciting of these, apart from ours, is Europa, one of Jupiter's moons that scientists look to harvest resources from. Over the years, Europa has teased scientists with the possibility of subsurface oceans and the potential for extraterrestrial life. Then there are asteroids and comets, the remains of the raw material from which our solar system was born. These objects coursed through our solar system like nomads, occasionally coming close for a friendly wave. Together, they form an interlocked and intricate system of celestial bodies. Although they are independent, they are interdependent and follow a certain mathematical and physical exactness that astounds scientists. There is such exactness that if one racing and puzzled in October 2017, Romor was startled to find a strange object in our solar system. The reddish object was shaped like a cigar or a pancake, which is different from other celestial bodies we are used to seeing in our system. It was first thought to be an asteroid, but later recast as a likely interstellar visitor. Some even considered it a possible alien spaceship, Whatever it is, the object's incredible speed and ridiculous trajectory indicated that it didn't originate from our solar system. The 600-foot-long object was named Oumuamua, a Hawaiian word that means a messenger from afar. According to NASA, during its brief visit, the rock approached Earth within 15 million miles, 24 million kilometers, about 62 Earth-moon distances, and disappeared a few weeks after its discovery. There have been as many theories about its origin and status as there are scientists, but what everyone was sure of was that it wasn't from here. To make things worse, two years later, in August 2019, another interstellar object was discovered, named Borisov. This object, however, looked different from Oumuamua, as it looked like a normal comet. This didn't worry scientists, as it pretty much fit into their prediction of what an interstellar object would look like. What made Oumuamua bewildering was that, unlike Borisov, it didn't have either a coma or a tail. A coma is the gaseous head around the comet's icy nucleus. So, what really is Oumuamua? The simple answer is that no one can definitively say what it is, but we might have an idea. For many years, astronomers all over the world have been waiting for an interstellar object like Oumuamua or Borisov to come along. While predicting the sighting of Oumuamua, was totally unexpected, apart from its proximity to Earth in its travels, and how it totally evaded detection until it was on its way out of our solar system's back door. It didn't look like what scientists imagined. It is small and unusually shaped while behaving like a comet, moving as though it were outgassing, but it didn't look like one. This has led many top scientists to assume the sublimation of either nitrogen or hydrogen ice. 
Initial measurements from scientists suggested that the object was shaped like a long cylinder with a size ratio of 10. One, meaning it was 10 times as long as it was wide. However, astronomers later revised these dimensions to approximately six, one which describes a pancake shape. In 2019, the measurements of Oumuamua's shape and dimensions were based on what astronomers refer to as its light curve. This is a graph that tracks how the object's brightness changed over time as it tumbled through space and appeared brighter when we saw its broader side. Nobody knows which star system Oumuamua originated from. However, in 2018, astronomers tracked Oumuamua back along the path from which it first approached the Sun and found that the object passed near four stars, coming closest to the red dwarf star Ipi 3,757 a million years ago. Perhaps Oumuamua came from there, or maybe it has been wandering space for much longer, where planets, asteroids, and comets in our solar system orbit the Sun in closed loops. Oumuamua's trajectory was different, and a NASA animation describes how the object's path was hyperbolic, meaning it came hurtling towards the Sun fast enough that the Sun's gravity could bend Oumuamua's path only slightly, rather than capturing it in a looping orbit. It is extremely weird, absolutely nothing like anything else in the solar system, apart from the characteristics of its orbit, which firmly pin it down as the interstellar interloper. The object is just a strange rock altogether. It has a dull red color, reminiscent of the objects found in the distant outskirts of our solar system, like Pluto. Oumuamua should by all rights be a comet after all these comets. But the biggest puzzle regarding Oumuamua is that we saw it at all. Just imagine for a second the sheer scale of time and space at work in the galaxy. Stars live and die over the course of millions or billions of years, and the formation of any solar system takes hundreds of millions of years. It takes tens of thousands of years for even the fastest moving objects to hop from star to star. In contrast, we've only been searching the heavens with telescopes for about 400 years. That's basically nothing in the grand scheme of time. It's a thin sliver of time to monitor the cosmos, and it's only within the past few decades, and even a few years, that we've had the technology to spot and track small, dim, fast-moving objects like Oumuamua. So, the fact that we saw Oumuamua at all makes the whole thing weirder. Do solar systems just randomly and commonly eject objects? It's simple. It's either rocks like Oumuamua are very common, or Lady Luck shines on us with our detection. It's more scientific to assume that such ejections are common than to say we got lucky, so we'd stick with that assumption. Now, if Oumuamua and other celestial globetrotters are commonly ejected from their solar systems, where do they come from? According to astronomers, it is highly improbable that an interstellar celestial globetrotter like Oumuamua can come from a mature, stable system, because mature and stable systems are mature and stable. It is a known fact that when a solar system settles down and grows up, it tends to keep things in place. It just doesn't eject enough raw material to saturate the galaxy. While there might be an occasional bad day for the average rock that finds itself on the wrong side of Jupiter and ends up being sent away from home, this doesn't seem to accurately explain the apparent frequency of interstellar objects. Let's recap. Here's an interstellar object that's traveling from one solar system to another. The fact that we've noticed two of them within two years suggests that these ejections are very common in our galaxy, unless you want to believe some alien civilization is spying on us. For there to be an ejection, there must be a home from which that object was thrown out, and that object comes from a solar system. If this is the case, it raises another question. What in a young, growing solar system is able to kick Oumuamua and friends out? setting the scene for humans to detect them in some other random system billions of years later? From our knowledge of how our solar system works, whatever can kick Oumuamua and its friends out must be a planet that has a lot of mass and has a gravitational effect on other members of the solar system, like a planet like Jupiter. If you have a planet like Jupiter in a young solar system, this means that young rocks, depending on their luck, they'll see mild orbital shifts and can be caught in gravity. The planet often gets pulled close to the Sun, becoming what's known as a hot Jupiter. Hot Jupiters, all snuggled up close to their parent star, aren't interested in ejecting debris. They just don't care anymore. 
With our current techniques, this means we're a little in the dark when it comes to just how many Neptunes are out there. The origins of many of these protoplanetary disks have visible gaps in them, and computational modeling reveals that the only way those gaps can form is by a growing planet clearing out. What's more, the size of the gap gives us an estimate of the planet's size. This is still very much a hypothesis, and the way to test this hypothesis is via further observations. The models produced by the team of astronomers predict the total number of Oumuamua-like objects floating around, which gives us the prediction for how many we ought to see in upcoming surveys. The more we watch the skies, the more interstellar interlopers we are sure to find, and the more we can identify them and characterize them, the more we can start to build a census, and from that census, we can work backward and understand everything from the population of massive exoplanets around other stars to the formation of solar systems themselves. Our observation of the heavens is set to be given a boost with the new Vera C. Rubin Observatory, planned to come online in 2024. According to Jennifer Bergner, an astrochemist with the University of California, Berkeley, they're predicting maybe one interstellar object a year. This new addition is a big deal for astronomers, as the closest star system to our own is over four light years away. And with current technology, it would take thousands of years to send a probe. Karen Meech, a scientist at the Institute for Astronomy at the University of Hawaii, who leads the team that initially found and observed Oumuamua, notes that some researchers have already designed missions to intercept one of these interstellar travelers, which could contain clues about the composition of the star systems that formed them. According to her, I think what's important about this is to get all these creative ideas out there. If we ever get to have a mission to one of these objects, we now have a wealth of testable ideas. The latest news is that Oumuamua is orbiting back to Earth. While there is no official reporting from leading astronomical observatories in NASA, this news has become fuel for conspiracy theorists who believe that Oumuamua is an alien spaceship. If it is true that Oumuamua is actually returning to Earth, then it would be harder to explain scientifically how an interstellar object is ejected into our solar system, comes close to Earth undetected, leaves barely detected, and comes back six years later. That would change things.